There was a time when the railroads of the United States were at the pinnacle of speed. Beginning with the streamliners of the 1930s, going by rail became as futuristic as it was fashionable. They epitomized luxury, comfort, and speed, but not necessarily progress, as passengers came to prefer air travel for long distances and the automobile for short trips. Most of these trains faded into history throughout the 1960s, with the remainders being nationalized under Amtrak in 1971. Elsewhere in the world, however, the rail's pursuit of speed relentlessly pushed onwards. In May of 1990, France took the world speed record for rail travel at 320 miles per hour. This was achieved with the TGV, a high-speed train on a dedicated right-of-way between Paris and Cordelon, and built for revenue service at 186 miles per hour. In the United States, building that type of railroad would be hurdled by NIMBYs, environmental concerns, and exorbitant capital investment, making construction of such a line logistically impossible. Even so, the desire to fulfill this need for speed was imperative for Amtrak's Northeast Corridor if it wanted to compete with road and air travel. So in 1992, Amtrak leased two European high-speed train sets to get the public on board with true high-speed rail. Both could cruise along the corridor at 150 miles per hour with the current electrified routes and on shorter timetables than the standard Metroliner schedules. First up was the X-2000, arriving from Sweden in October 1992. Designed two years earlier by ABB Traction, it shaved an hour off the travel time between Stockholm and Gothenburg on the state railway's trackage dating to the 19th century. One of its secrets to achieving its travel time was its self-steering trucks, where its axles would turn independently of each other around curves, allowing for a smoother ride and less wear on the wheels and rails. A more visual example was its tilt mechanism, to fend off G-forces when also going around curves. Running stateside beginning in December, the technology would be examined and operated by SJ personnel, who would then instruct Amtrak employees on how it operated. Following closely behind from Germany was the Inner City Express, or ICE. Deutschbahn had just imposed the first generation of these trains in 1991 on routes to Hamburg, Frankfurt, Mannheim, and Stuttgart at speeds up to 174 miles per hour. Their network was also integrated on existing infrastructure with the occasional splurge in straighter and flatter alignments for higher speeds. Beginning in April 1993, this train set would follow the same rigorous testing in what could be described as the ICE's comfort zone. The tests on the Northeast Corridor were laced with optimism. The X-2000 cruised up to 155 miles per hour, with the ice topping out at 165, just five knots short of the official American speed record on the same railroad. Passengers who rode the revenue service tests were smitten by their looks and comfort, providing Amtrak with very favorable feedback. Amtrak could see the appeal they held with the general public, and so established cross-country tours for both trains to spread the appeal of high-speed rail for everyone.
Both trains would return to the corridor for the rest of 1993, and then back to their European homes, leaving the United States with a newfound appetite for better rail transportation. With the data gathered from these tests, true high-speed trains would finally reach the U.S. in December of 2000. The Acela Express zooms between Washington and New York in 2 hours 45 minutes, with 75% of the commuting market between the two cities, and service extending to Boston. Plans have come and gone for a nationwide network, with some states barely getting traction with their own plans on wavering political support. The vision remains, though, and becomes clear whenever airlines economize at the cost of comfort, gasoline prices rise, and the roads get jammed up with traffic, construction, and accidents. Rail travel in America may have tapered off since losing their dominance decades ago, but their inherent advantages over comparable modes of transportation still keeps them in the pursuit for speed.